Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and today we're going to take a look at the Genius Pro controllers from Experience Lights. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, so I just let my screwdriver fall to the ground, which is okay. But what we're going to look at is these controllers. Genius controllers are a brand that historically, a few years ago, they came out with these new controllers. New brand to the market, people that were around, um, that were known by the industry, but you know, had a new new thing out there. And I had some and I got rid of them because they weren't gonna originally have compatibility with FPP to be able to uh, run sequences on their own and be able to sync with a show player that was playing. And that to me was a really big deal break. Fast forward about December last year, of course, the opportune time, they added to the software the ability to load files in from FPP and to sync with other FPP devices. So it can do pretty much everything in that respect, except schedule its own schedule as a um, FPP main player, okay? And they don't have an audio output for audio. Other than that though, they can work within that ecosystem, which I really, really like. So now that they got that going, Let's talk about these controllers, take a look, let you know my thoughts, my opinions as to whether you should get one of these or not. Okay, these opinions are all my own, even though David uh, from Experience Lights sent over this controller for us and we're considering carrying these on our store in the future. So there's a couple of things that really sets the, the genius controllers apart in this industry. Okay, uh, and I wanna walk through those. First and foremost, they went ahead and they were the first and maybe the only, definitely the first, to come up with a different type of terminal for your wires for your pigtails. So let's take a little look at how these work, okay? I'm gonna turn this around so it faces me if we got it really good there, okay? And so these guys, literally, you've got three and they're color coded for the wire so much so they didn't even bother to actually label on the circuit board what wire goes where. Why? Because it's color coded. So here I've got a three wire, just standard pigtail. All right. So I've got black, which is my negative. Some people call it a ground. It's not. Then we've got an orange color. Okay. That's for the data. That's for the yellow. And then we've got a red. Now you might ask yourself, okay, why did they do orange when it's really yellow? Well, this industry for sure is not big enough to invent, invent its own electrical components. And I can tell you from my experience that um, they definitely like had to source an existing part. Like you're not going to create a new part and have it be um, cost worthy in our industry. It would really jack the price up. So you flip down these little guys right here. That opens up the terminal. You go ahead and press your wires in, right? So like so. Um, you do generally want to strip them a little more than usually the factory strip on an extension or on a pigtail would be. Okay, insert those, close the door. That's all. And now it's in there, it's solid, it's secure. This will light up lights um, as a pigtail. Okay, the other thing that's really unique on these Pro models is that you actually can mount your power supplies directly to the board. Okay, and I'm showing two ways that it can be done. So the first is for a single power supplier for your bottom power supply. There are screws here on the bottom, okay, that come with it with these nice little nylon washers. And you can attach your standard power supply, such as the MeanWealth LRS350, right here on the board. And then there are wires connected that you just put place into the screw terminals that are already connected to the board, so you don't need wire that allow the board to be powered. Okay, very cool, right? What else? Oh, brackets. So there are these brackets that actually come out of this hole in the bottom. You see that hole right there. These brackets came from there. I just used a screwdriver to wiggle them free. And then as you can see, they sit right here on the board and, and tighten down to the power supply itself. Now, the benefit of these and what they do is they allow you, like this is a 16 port board, they allow you to have two power supplies stacked with room for airflow, hello, and be hooked up to the power inputs on the board 
so you're ready to go. So that was, to me, when that came out, that was when I went out and bought some of their boards and then later sold them. And then they added the functionality that I was looking for, right? These guys really have did a lot of, have done a lot of great things with the hardware design. Just the fact that, you know, you don't have, with the green terminal blocks with the screws being a screw connection, they will loosen up over time. You set up, you tear down, there's vibrations. It loosens that up. It can cause major problems, okay? These solve that. You don't have to check them. You don't have to tighten them, okay? Another problem they solved was just mounting boards and where to mount the power supply. You know, I can take these, and I'm, I'm lazy with my controller boxes, okay? I'm super lazy. So I just grab those socket boxes, those waterproof boxes for, like, putting a power strip in. I just grab one of those, then I can grab this, mount the power supply on the boards, stick in the pigtails, drop it in the box. Done. Done. Literally done. Okay. Um, it's that simple. Other really awesome fix. Boot up time. Okay. We're going to plug this thing into a network and we're going to boot it up and we're going to watch how long it takes to boot up. Ready? Okay. So here I've got a network cable. We've got to plug it into our network here at the office into its port. Okay going to turn you to the overhead view. And now I am plugging it in in three, two, one. So in about three seconds, we see the name. Maybe six seconds, seven, maybe about 10 seconds and it's fully booted up. It has an IP address for me and it's actually displaying a QR code for the hotspot. While we're here, it might be hard to see, but this push and turn knob is your menu on board, should you need to use it, okay? Um, the beautiful thing about this knob is it's really easy to get to. With other controllers on the market, other controllers that I love, they have buttons down on the circuit board that by the time you have your pigtails, your wiring all set up, you're like sticking your finger in sideways to try to press it, and it's, it's not amazing, right? This is much better. It's very tall so that even if you have a bunch of wires in there, you can get to it, you can reach it, and you can use the menu on the controller and it works really well. Okay, so now that we've got it, we've got it connected, I'm gonna show you, I don't even need to see this IP address because I've got it plugged into a network with a router. Okay, so there's DHCP there. It's automatically assigned a, DM, a DMX, a IP address, that's the right term. And now I'm gonna show you on the computer how to gain access to it, how to use it. And for a lot of users, honestly, you don't even have to ever touch the web interface on this controller. And I think that's something for the future that's gonna happen a lot, um, simply because everything you need is built into x -Lights. So let's sit down at the computer, we're gonna take a look. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna launch x -Lights. And I think I have, oh, I've got this controller in here. So I'm just gonna go to a temp folder that I had set up, I think. We'll find out if, oh, it's in here. So we're gonna delete it. So now all I'm gonna do is I've got it. It's on my network. This computer's on my network. So I can hit discover and it's gonna go find that controller. This is uh, something else from stage lighting, from the stage lighting world that's in there. I wonder if it didn't like because I had it before. Of course, something always goes wrong when you're uh, testing it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go back uh, to my browser, go to the IP address given, and it shows up. I don't know why it, it, it might be literally that I had it in here before. Yep, I think it was literally, maybe it wasn't ready yet, or maybe it's that I had it in here before, um, but it shows up now and it's good to go. And then, you know, I can add models to it, assign, whatever. It shows up right away. So I didn't even need to find the IP address of it. I didn't even need to go to the website. It just shows up, right? And then in terms of sending sequences to it, okay, I could just go to Tools, FPP Connect, and it shows up. Now, a couple caveats here. We'll see if it shows up. It did not show up. Why? So I need to go to the web page. This is the one thing I have to go to the web page for though I bet I can do this from the menu on board, probably. I go to inputs and I switch to SD card sync packets. It does a quick little reboot or something. Now we've got some, some on here because for you guys, of course, as it goes here, oh, I forgot to turn my mouse on again so you can see it. Um, as it goes here, I wanted to test this beforehand. So I set up another FPP device, set it as the player, put a schedule in it, added these sequences in it, played them, 
this played back followed flawlessly. Um, now that's only going to be on a wired network, which is one of the downsides of the geniuses in my mind. I would love to have the ability for it to have a larger antenna and then be able to sit on your network and get its commands, its sync packets wirelessly. That's not there at this time, but it might be there in the future. Who knows? So hit FPP connect. And now that we put it in that correct mode, <laughs> it still doesn't show up. You know, that's kind of how these things go sometimes, isn't it? Uh, but it should show up. There, that time it showed up. So it just took an extra try. Who knows? It's free software, guys. Remember that. Um, but it does a great job. And then, like, the only kickers that I've noticed with this process is if you are going to send sequences to it, you need to have models assigned. If there's no models, it'll be a, a zero byte sequence and the controller just kind of gets mad at you. It tells you that the file's too big, actually. Not a big deal. Um, as long as you have models on it, then you can use this to upload your sequences to it. And then they show up right here in the web browser, ready to go. Now, do you need to use the web browser? No. Am I going to walk you through it? Yes. So homepage looks like this. Um, most people probably aren't going to have to touch most of this. Like in my mind, with the way Xlights uploads for output, there's really no need for most people to go to this page to look at the string outputs. There's just not, right? Same on the input side. Switch it to SD card sync packets, leave it alone, right? Done. Okay. Testing, of course, you know, a test page can be helpful from time to time. I get that. Um, and they've got one here, and it's a good one. It does the things, it has more options than you probably need, and it allows you to test things, okay? Um, actually, on the inputs page, so you can do the sync packets, but you can also go to standalone animation like this, and then you can just play back that F sequence. So now it's playing back that file that's making the lights run, okay? Then I can just switch it back. Perfect. Power. This is one place that's really cool. So they do real-time current monitoring and pixel counting. So you can actually see how much power your pixels are taking and use that and, and use that info to, you know, load up your fuses fully. Um, they also have the e-fuses built in. I think they were the first controller brand to do that, which means no more fuses. They're electronic. If they trip, you can untrip them here. Or I think if you reboot, they'll just automatically untrip. You can also count your pixels. So you can you can plug in pixels, hit this button. It's going to count them all, which is pretty cool as well. Um, can also be a little bit of a troubleshooting thing, maybe. Okay. Other than that, software updates. I have successfully run a software update on these. Gave it a try. Um, you just go grab the files. They have it at experiencelights.com. They have all the files there. If you need to update the firmware, it gives you two files. You go ahead and update them. It runs you through it. It restarts. Pretty simple. Okay. So let's hop back to the controller, talk about pros, cons, talk about how it compares price-wise to other controllers, because that matters, and then we'll wrap it all up. All right, so when it comes down to it, there's a few things that I really love and a couple things that I don't love so much about these controllers, okay? What I love is, you know, nobody has beat, and these guys are doing the best, at ease of use, ease of assembly, right? Having the, the uh, power supply go straight on the board, connecting it with included wires, having these different spring-loaded terminals instead of our lever terminals. I don't think they're actually spring-loaded because that would wear out. Uh, instead of the terminal blocks, big wins in my book. The fast boot-up time. Oh, my goodness. Like, I love my Cope controllers. I absolutely do. But they take forever and a day to boot up. Um, not only that, like, I've been recommending Culps for years, and I love them, and I use them in my show, and they're great. But... Culp's and the other Beagle Bone controllers, um, I've noticed after a few years, just like the terminal blocks loosening up, your connection from where that Beagle Bone sits on the board, it can start to creep off um, just with heat and bouncing and whatever, okay? And when it does that, it can bounce off just far enough that it'll run, but display a whole bunch of errors. And it really threw me for a loop the first time it happened. I thought all kinds of things were wrong. And, you know, it just, it was a pain because I have to, I have it on a mounting plate in a controller box, like most people do, but it's on the back side. So to actually get to it, to tighten it back up, I had to pull the mounting board out of the box, of course, after shutting off power. And, you know, it's a lot more work than it had to be, okay? 
These guys, they boot up very, very, very fast. They are, you know, ready to go very quick. So if a circuit flips in your display and you go and, you know, smack the GFCI, turn it back on, replug it in, whatever, it's up, you know, 10 seconds, right? That to me is super cool. Downsides though, of course, it will sync to FPP. I love that. I love that it, it'll upload from FPP. All of that stuff is critical, very important. And I think it's great that it does that. I, I wish they had a controller with an audio output and I wish that they could schedule things in there. So if you go all Genius controllers in your display, you're gonna wanna have a Raspberry Pi running FPP with an audio output as your show player. Then it will connect into a network. You could use just a small inexpensive router or something similar wired from that to all your controllers. Okay, so they're all plugged in wired to get their FPP commands. They don't do wireless. But other than those two relatively minor things, I'm a big fan of these. I think um, they've done a great job. Obviously, they've taken off in this hobby. People love these controllers. And I'm just glad like that those couple pieces of functionality I was really looking for for myself and for you guys, those are there now. And so now I think, you know, when you look at these price-wise, they're neck and neck with a Culp. Like if you do the Culp, you add the Beagle Bone, you add the SD card, those three things are all needed to make it run. It's almost, it's pretty much like an identical cost to this Genius controller. And yes, I mean, you have to add an SD card to run the sequences on this controller. I mean, it's a $10 thing, but regardless, like they're really price competitive. They really are. And I think some of these extra features and benefits, like I didn't add up the cost of the primary wire to connect the, the power supply to the controller and the mounting plate, which I don't need with this because everything just mounts to the controller. Like they're literally neck and neck, maybe a little cheaper, maybe not quite as cheap, but you know, really good with some of my favorites in the past. Um, so I definitely recommend checking them out at experiencelights.com. Again, I'm hoping we're going to carry at least some of them in the future over on our store at Above AVL. It's the Warren Christmas Lighting Store. We would love to serve you with everything you need there. And if you're brand new to this hobby and you don't know what to do, head over to LearnChristmasLighting.com. Grab my free guide, The Four Things I Really Wish I Knew Before I Began in This Hobby. It's going to help save you time. It's going to help save you money big time. It's going to help save you frustration. And we'll see you guys in the next video as long as you're subscribed. Thanks.